This week in IT, Apple announces a new feature in iOS 16, iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura lockdown mode. Designed to protect against nation state attacks and mercenary spyware like Pegasus, lockdown mode is for journalists, high profile figures, dissidents and anyone who wants a more secure device. If you'd like to know more about lockdown mode, what it blocks, what limitations it imposes and whether you should enable it for your own device or your company's iPhones, then stay tuned for more details. Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in this life and IT consultant in a previous one. So first of all, we need a little bit of history if we're to really understand why Apple is doing this now. So if you remember back to August 2016, there was a huge scandal surrounding the Pegasus spyware. Now this came from an Israeli-based NSO, and basically they were able to launch the most successful spyware attack on a smartphone that there had ever been. And it was the first time that any spyware had been able to successfully remotely jailbreak an iPhone device. Now this was a big problem for Apple because they'd always marketed their devices as being the most secure and in 2019 they even went as far as putting up a billboard at CES saying whatever happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone. And since Pegasus was first discovered the incidence of mercenary spyware has just become more and more of a problem. So what exactly is lockdown mode? Now Apple announced iOS 16, iPadOS 16 and macOS Ventura at its WWDC, so that's the Worldwide Developer Conference event earlier this year, but there was no mention of lockdown mode. Now this announcement came from Apple just a few days ago and it announced that this feature would be coming to the new operating systems that it's launching. They're expected to arrive sometime in September this year. Now lockdown mode is already available today in iOS 16 beta free if you want to try it. Of course it is a beta so it's not necessarily the final implementation that we'll see in September but it'll give you an idea about how it works. So what exactly does it do? So when you switch lockdown mode on there are a whole set of features on your device that are going to be blocked. So the first thing is it's going to have a more restricted USB restriction mode. So this is about when you connect devices physically using a cable to your device, it's going to have a much more restricted mode in terms of what data and what features can be accessed between those two connected devices. For instance, it might prevent things like juice jacking. If you use configuration profiles, that's the MDM, Mobile Device Management configuration profiles at your company, you won't be able to add any more once lockdown mode is enabled, but any configuration profiles that you do already have configured on the device will carry on working. The feature set for built-in messaging applications like you know, SMS and FaceTime, for instance, iMessage, they're going to be limited to the absolute basics and file types are going to be restricted to the really hardy, well-known file types that we often share on the internet, like GIFs and JPEGs, for instance, but anything else you won't be able to share now. And everyone is going to be blocked from contacting you unless you contact them first. When you do make contact with a person and you open up that two-way communication. If there's a period of you know radio silence if you like for 30 days or more then you will have to contact that person again to reopen the communication channel with them. And the same is going to apply for any share requests that you might get from Apple services like iCloud for instance. There are a whole load of web technologies that are going to be disabled in Safari and any other applications or browsers that use the Safari rendering engine. So for instance, if you're using Chrome or Edge, for instance, on an iOS device, they will also be restricted if lockdown is enabled. So things like just-in-time JavaScript compiling will be turned off. There'll be no quick look previews. Advanced features like WebRTC and WebGL will also be disabled. So you're going to have quite a limited web experience. The great thing about the way Apple has designed lockdown mode is that you'll be able to opt out for specific websites. So if, for instance, there are particular websites that you implicitly trust, you will be able to exclude them and have the full web experience just on those websites. But all other websites will have these extra restrictions imposed on them. 
So should you enable lockdown mode on your own device when this becomes available or for your company devices? Well, probably not because most of these restrictions are designed to block really sophisticated attacks. But if you do your own risk assessment and conclude, for instance, that maybe people in your company could potentially be at risk, or if Apple sends you a message saying you're a person that's likely to be at risk from this kind of attack, then of course you should consider enabling it. So far, hackers have already been able to get around the lockdown restrictions. Somebody's already managed to get into an Apple device using a USB connection with the lockdown mode switched on. Now, of course, this is still in beta, so hopefully this is something that Apple will address by the time it reaches general availability in September. But it's not really the greatest of starts. If you're looking to potentially apply this to particular people in your organization, assumedly it can be configured with MDM, although I don't believe Apple has actually released details about that yet. But it's great to see Apple taking a lead on this because most companies, especially Apple, in the way that they've promoted their devices as being the most secure, understandably probably aren't really keen to admit that people, especially high profile figures who are likely to be targets or dissidents or whatever, need to do something extra to secure their Apple devices. But this is the first step of kind of admitting, well, you know, this is not a perfect solution. If you want a more secure device, then we're gonna help you to enable it. But of course, there are going to be some additional restrictions if you want to apply more security. So now that Apple has taken this first step, and of course there are third party solutions that you can buy for things like Android that allow you to make them more secure, but it's great to see this kind of thing built into the operating system. It's not an additional third party solution that you need to manage. And it would be nice, I think, if we saw this kind of thing come to Android especially and to Windows devices, a built-in option that allows us to enable that security even if it reduces functionality, but enable us to manage it in a way that, well, if you want to exempt yourself from particular domains and sites, you can do that. So it'll be interesting to see how successful this is, how many people actually use it when it becomes available in September, and the effect that it will have on security. Security researchers that have already commented about this think that it's gonna be a big deal, and it's gonna make it harder for nation states to target devices, and it's really gonna increase the costs for them. Of course, there's no such thing as 100% secure, so you can't ever guarantee complete security, but it's the next step just to increase in that cost for hackers. So let me know what you think about lockdown mode in the comments below. Would you consider using it if you felt that you were at risk? And would you like to see something similar on Android and Windows? If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. And please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see this kind of weekly IT news. But before you go, there are two videos on the screen now that you also might find interesting. So please check them out and I'll see you next time.